Should I buy a house in this market or should I wait a little bit more? My realtor is telling me that right now is the best time to buy a house. In this video, I will explain to you what are the things that need to align within yourself to be ready to buy your first home. Hi there, welcome to your channel, The Foreigner in America, where I teach locals and foreigners everything related to money, personal finances, investing, real estate, and the markets. If you are someone like myself that loves money and wants to be independent and wealthier, please subscribe to this great channel and hit that bell so you're alerted every time I upload videos. I also post on Instagram and TikTok now at The Foreigner in America. I post on my blog, theforeignerinamerica.com, where I elaborate more on the inside. And I have a new book called A Foreigner in America Can Succeed that talks about money, investing, jobs, dieting, exercise, friendship, among many other topics of interest. And you can get it for the cost of a latte in the link below. Buying a house is not an easy task, especially now when it's a seller's market. Your realtor will never tell you that right now is not the best moment to buy. It is the best moment to sell because you can get multiple offers and probably go over appraised value. If you ask your realtor why this is the best moment for you to buy, they will tell you because prices keep going up. That BS is not a real answer. Prices have been going up since the 80s and except when there is a horrible crash like 08, a house will never be cheaper year after year. That is why real estate is such a great investment. But people keep looking at the markets as their way to go, which I understand because it's easier than investing in properties. First thing when buying a house is you have two ways of doing it. You either pay cash or finance. Little to say, if you want to pay cash for a house, you're either wealthy meaning you have enough money into investments that you don't need to put anymore, or you are risk adverse like Mr. Dave Ramsey. Actually, Ramsey is also wealthy, so he is both. He's a good guy. If you are not wealthy in investments or risk adverse like Ramsey, you should definitely put an amount down that you're comfortable with, meaning that your total payment or mortgage, taxes, insurance, HOA, if you have one, and maintenance is less than what you're comfortable paying with your income and finance the rest at the cheapest interest rate. The rest of that money should be placed into investments. Whatever you want, call it 401k, IRA, mutual funds, index funds, or more real estate. I only recommend you go for pre-tax accounts in the market since those will give you the most for your money. Did you know that if you maxed out your 401k at 58,000 a year for 30 years, you will end up having $10 million? The problem with the 401k is that it is tricky. And the only way you can do that is by having your own business because they only allow you to put 19,500 as an employee and your employer will never ever match more than that in this planet. I don't know if in planet Mars or Venus they will, we should ask the Martians, but not on planet Earth. The second thing to consider when you want to buy a house is your personal status. Are you single, married, or living together with someone? Do you have kids or planning to? Are you 100% certain that you will last at least 10 years in the location you are right now? Listen, when you buy in a buyer's market, you buy under market price, meaning you get a, a deal. The house is 300,000 appraised value. You come in at 280 and you get it. If you want to turn around and sell it in less than 10 years, you might as well get appraised value for it minus commissions. You break even. But in the seller's market, you will most likely overpay for the house. So you need those 10 years for the equity on the house to overcome whatever it is you overpaid plus the commission. Otherwise, you will just lose a bunch of money. Never buy a house in a city where you don't plan to build roots. It is not a good business unless you can turn around and rent it out or sell at a profit. So run your numbers first. Third thing you should consider when buying your house is your DTI ratio. This is 
King. If you ask me, Jaime, what is the one thing out of all the BS you will say in this video that I should focus my attention on? That is, my friend, your DTI. When your brother or sister buys a house, your friends buy a house, your ex buys a house, everyone you know buys a house except you, you feel like a mouse. You are the only person that is renting. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? Let's call Superman. It doesn't matter that every person you know bought a house and you haven't. What matters is their DTIs. DTI stands for dead to income ratio. How much money they owe relative to how much they produce every month. When people buy stupid houses they can afford into 30 year mortgages, at 3.5% down and they end up with 3,500, 4,000 a month payment for the rest of their lives, plus maintenance and bills, they are tied forever into a life of agony. It's like selling your soul to the devil. Good things happen in the beginning, but then your life turns into a total misery. Don't do that. Don't buy using an FHA loan unless the payment is comfortable for your household DTI. After you buy the house, your DTI should not be greater than 35%. Did you get that number? This is extremely important because your financial life is at risk. Your DTI, debt to income ratio, should not be over 35% after buying the house. If it is 35% now and you haven't bought it yet, Forget about buying and keep renting until you bring that number down. What is your DTI ratio today? Comment below. I'm interested to know. Now, let me give you my foreigner insight for this video. I am not saying that it's impossible to buy a house in this seller's market without getting killed either. Don't get me wrong. I want you to be a homeowner. What I'm trying to accomplish with this video is that you are a happy and wealthy homeowner like Mr. Ramsey. I don't want you to wake up every morning thinking, how in the world am I going to pay my mortgage this month? I need to tap those credit cards. No, no credit cards for that. No worries to pay the house. Put a solid down payment that gives you a level of comfort that you and your family need. Even if that's 50% down, I don't care as long as it works for your DTI. When a friend tells you to buy a house, ask him what his DTI is. You will be surprised how broke people are and they are giving stupid advice on how to manage money. It's like a 400 pound man giving a, me advice on how to carry a, a six pack. Stay healthy, stay focused, bring that DTI down as much as possible and then focus on getting the best deal on your new house. So I hope you enjoyed this video about home buying. Make sure you give me a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any one of my two weekly videos. Check out my Instagram, my blog, and the new TikTok. And make sure you check out my book, Affordable in America, Can Succeed for the Price of a Latte in the Link. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you around.